Welcome to Faith. Uh, would you all please write? Good morning. Welcome to Faith. Let us recite together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please take a moment to pass the peace of Christ to your neighbor. The next hymn this morning is Come and Let Us Sweetly Join, number 699.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day when we can come together as a family of faith and worship you in this beautiful place. God, we thank you for those who are here with us today and those who are worshiping with us online. May we all be united through your Holy Spirit as one body of Christ. Lord, as we lean in closely this morning to learn more about you, we pray that you lean in closely to us. God, fill us with your Holy Spirit and surround us with your love. Guard our hearts and minds as we move toward another week. Walk with us and guide us and point us in the direction where you would be calling us. You are our compass. Help us to keep our eyes focused on you. There are times when things don't go as we have planned, and anxiety and worry begin to cloud our judgment. But you remind us not to worry, to pray continually, and to seek you with all that we have. You are always at our side, and for that we are so grateful. Help us to trust in you in every part of our lives because you are trustworthy, steady, and true. You are our strength and our comfort and our rock and our redeemer. We lift up to you the members of our faith family who have been sick this week. We pray for those who have lost a loved one and for those in need of your healing touch. Please give us wisdom and discernment as we go out into the world this week bringing your peace and your kindness and your love to all people. And now let us say together the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. My name is David, and I'm proud to be one of your pastors here at Faith. Welcome, welcome, welcome to worship. A few announcements uh, for us as we continue on in worship. Uh, these are all found in the announcement section of your bulletin, but uh, these, uh, these are really all time sensitive. Uh, first today, after worship today, we're going to have a ministry fair in our community room just outside these doors and then hang a left. You can find out uh, what all's going on here at the church in the fall. You can learn more about our, our Sunday school classes, our Bible studies, our sewing groups, ways to be involved in the community. Uh, Faith Kids Preschool will be there. I'm I could just keep on going. Do, do stay just a few minutes and check out the ministry fair today. That, and we'll be doing the same thing after the 11 o'clock service. Uh, next Sunday, the 20th, uh, I, I am calling it officially, uh, We Love Jennifer Day. No? Yes. Yes. Uh, next Sunday is uh, Pastor Jennifer's last Sunday with us after over four uh, faithful years of service here at Faith. Uh, you, you, uh, many of you know that um, uh, Jennifer's been appointed by the bishop to be the pastor of worship at Memorial Drive UMC at, in, in Houston. Uh, we're gonna have a reception for Pastor Jennifer at, in the 10 o'clock hour in between our services. So please do come and, and show Jennifer some love uh, next Sunday. Friends, we're also uh, in the month of August collecting uh, hygiene items for our friends uh, at the Hope Center. The Hope Center is uh, closer to 1960, uh, runs this incredible program for un our unhoused neighbors on the street. Uh, I, I actually had to, I, I had to ask Hope Center about what, what are the kinds of things that I should go to Target or HEB and buy for our, for our friends. 
you'll find, um, you'll find that in the, in the announcement section. Also, there's a, a shopping list uh, when you go to the right in our children's wing, uh, things to buy uh, when it comes to toiletries for uh, unhoused people. And then finally, uh, beginning on August 30th, that's a Wednesday in a few weeks, we're going to be restarting our Wednesday night program, Wednesdays at Faith. Uh, it'll be a, a light meal followed by classes for children, youth, and adults. I'm going to be teaching a class on United Methodism, I'm calling it YUMC. Why are we a United Methodist Church? What is unique about us? What do we believe? All of that and hopefully more. 630, 630 on Wednesday. That's a lot of words. Take a breath. Glory to God. Thank you for being in worship today. Let's give ourselves away uh, with our tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Loving God, uh, we say thank you for all that you're doing here at Faith. Thank you for this people that you have gathered from all walks of life to come and, and just be your people, be, be your church. Take what we have to give today, our prayers, our voices, our gifts, our hearts. And use it all to build up your body and build up your kingdom on earth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen.
You may be seated. I invite all, yes, I invite all of our, um, excuse me, all of our third graders receiving their Bibles to come forward, please. There should be four of you. Come on up, come on up. And then we'll have uh, many more in our 11 o'clock service. And while those kids are coming forward, um, I am asked a lot, well, how do you sign up for Chancel Choir? Well, today is a great day. We have a table. Uh, please put your information on there, and we would be glad to get back with you. Thank you. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Hey, everybody. I'm behind you. Sorry. I'm going to get in front of you. Hi, I'm David. These are your Bibles. Uh, every year at Faith, uh, we give third grade Bibles. Uh, why third grade? Well, it's about the time where it's, it's time to claim these books as your own. Uh, so it is our hope, and we're going to pray over these books, uh, over these Bibles in a few minutes, and you'll hear this in the prayer. It is our prayer and hope that you read this. This is a lot cooler than the Bible I got in my, when I grew up. It's like has colors, and it has, uh, and it has questions and, and some responses to things you'll read in the Bible. So would you do me a favor, please? Uh, would you take this home and read it with your parents? And talk to him about it and go, what's, what's going on in here? What, what do you think about this? So let's present these. Bennett, read full. Clara Annalise Alberts. Colin Murphy. And Kaya Chang. Here's what we're going to do. Church family, would you please pray with me? And we're going to pray over these Bibles. Loving Almighty God, uh, we pray first and foremost that you would look after these, uh, your children and our children. Bless them, look after them. May they grow in love of God and love of neighbor every single day. Bless these Bibles. That as these beloved children read their Bibles, and study them and wrestle with them, that they may find in them the words of life. We pray all these things in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you. Now, you may be seated, and I'm going to invite all the children in worship today to come forward. We're going to mix things up and do things differently. Would you come forward for a children's message? Come on down. We're going to have some fun. Yay! Can I have, can, I'm going to sit right here. Oh, who's this in front of me? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Okay. We're going to play something. Can you see this bag, everybody? Can you see this bag? Okay, we're going to play What's in the Bag? Okay, and I'm going to um, ask a few questions, and you're, you're going to guess. What's in the bag? This has a face, and it has hands on it. And it has numbers. What is it? Yes. A clock. a clock! A clock has a face and numbers? Yes, it does. Here it is. What's in the bag? Oh, we have this. Miss Debbie, what is this? Well, it's a watch. It's so we can take time, right? Okay. So. I've got one, too. Okay, so last week we learned about how Joseph had a bunch of brothers, but his brothers were really jealous, right? And his brothers threw Joseph in a big hole that time. So they took him out of the hole, but then they sold him to the Egyptians so he could be a slave. That's not nice either, right? But God had a plan. So this week we're going to learn about how Joseph had the ability to interpret dreams. And he did this because God watched over him. And you know what? God watches over all of us, too. Okay? And wait a minute. This is a watch, right? Get it? See what we did there? Oh, that was good. Uh-huh. That was good. I see what you did there. Uh, dreams. So if, if Joseph interprets dreams, have you ever, um, do you ever, like, 
remember your dreams at night? No? Yes? Did I get a yes? You remember your dream from last night? What did you dream last night? A big dollhouse. And your granddad was eating a whale. I want Joseph to interpret that dream. Uh, Friends, would you pray with me? And church family, would you pray with me? Actually, uh, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for looking after us. We ask that you would help us look after others. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey guys, do you know what time it is? It's time for Sunday school. Okay, Can't go that way. Would you all please sing along? This is Jesus Loves Me. Today's scripture reading comes from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Loving and everlasting God, we pray that you would open up our ears to hear you today and open up our hearts to receive you, maybe, maybe for the very first time. God, open up our eyes to see you, open up our mouths to proclaim you. God, open up our hands so we might be doers of your word and not hearers only. And God, please move our feet so we might walk in your way all week long. It is in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen. The poet Maya Angelou said, words are things. Someday we'll be able to measure the power of words. I think they are things. They get on the walls. They get in your wallpaper. They get in your rugs, in your upholstery, in your clothes, and finally into you. Today's sermon is really all about the power of words, not just any words, the words we use when we are having faith conversations with our families, when we're talking about God with the people we love the most. We don't just hope these words would get into our loved ones, get in the upholstery, get in the rug. We're counting on it. We're counting on these words getting into our loved ones. We're in this series of sermons called Family Matters. We're asking, how do we make faith a family matter, not just a church matter? How do we raise up disciples of Jesus uh, at home and, and at church? Today we're talking about, uh, actually talking about faith as a family. We, we have to talk faith out, not just talk about faith, but talk it out now remember, when, whenever we're using uh, the word family, 
Uh, we mean families of all shapes and sizes. We mean blended families, families with living relatives, spouses, friends, single people have huge families too, children, grandparents, grandchildren, all of the above. We, uh, we build up faith as a family when we, when we have conversations with the people we count as family. When we have conversations about God, when we make them our primary conversation partners, when we're talking God. So the big idea today is just super simple. Talk about God at home. I'm reading this book for this, for this series. It's called Sticky Faith. I, I introduced it last week. Sticky Faith is full of research at a Fuller Theological Seminary about how we uh, develop a lifelong faith in teenagers, a, a faith that, that sticks, doesn't slip away. But I found that the, the wisdom in the book really applies to people of all ages and all, all kinds of families. Here, here are some statistics that I read in the book. A survey of, of 11,000 teenagers across six denominations found that only 12% of youth have a regular dialogue with their mom on faith or life issues. So let's unpack that. That means one out of, one out of eight kids are talking to mom about faith or, or life issues. And for dads, we've got to go a lot lower. Uh, only 5% or one out of 20 kids are talking to dad about faith and life issues. That means the vast, for the vast majority of, of parents with, with kids at home, the, the, kind of, the kinds of conversations we're having, they're not spiritual conversations, they're surface conversations. Right? One out of uh, eight kids talking to mom about faith and one out of 20 kids talking to to dad about faith. I mean, no wonder our, our kids are growing up and leaving faith behind. We're actually not talking about it with the people who, who love us the most. And I get it. Faith conversations can be so awkward. They can be, I mean, I remember growing up, they can be totally embarrassing to talk to mom and dad about what you believe or talk to, talk to other people about God. That's just, it can be, it can be, it can be so foreign. And I get it. No one wants to be pushy with their faith, right? No one wants to be a Bible thumper and say, I want you to believe this. Nobody wants to be that kind of Christian. There's a value there. It's respect. I totally get that. We respect our loved ones enough for them to come to their own conclusions about what they believe without us pushing it on them. We respect them. And another reason we may not talk about uh, God at home or with other people is because we shouldn't have to use words in order to preach Jesus. Our, word, our, our deeds, our works should speak for themselves. Our, our deeds of compassion and mercy and justice should, should preach Jesus all on their own. We shouldn't need words. It was St. Francis of Assisi who said, preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. Right? There's a, there's a value there too. Authenticity. We should live as authentic Christians whose very lives preach the, the compassion and mercy of Jesus with respect and authenticity. Now those are two good values to have whenever we're talking God, whether it's, whether it's people at home or, or anybody. We should respect people and be totally authentic. But eventually... We use words. We use words to communicate our faith. And I find it's because I don't even know what I believe until I talk it out. <laughs> faith, faith isn't something you just talk about. It is something you talk out with people so that you even know what you believe. I have, I have found uh, in my own life, my faith isn't a passive thing. It's an, it's an active thing. It, it's something that has to be worked out. Like, like faith isn't something you soak up like a sponge. It's not something you catch like a cold. It, faith is something you process. Like you would process the Barbie movie. Like what just happened there? You don't even know until you talk it out. Uh, it's something you process like grandma's passing. What, what just happened? We've got to talk this out. It's something you process like the first time your kids 
really pay attention to the man at the, at the intersection holding a sign saying, God bless you, 25 cents. What just happened there? It's something you process. We don't really know what we believe about things, especially the deep things of life, like, like God, until we talk it out, until we give words to it. And those words then come back to us. They work on us. And now we know what we think. Now we know what we believe. Faith, uh, we, we, we talk faith out to bring faith in. The words we use to process faith together actually becomes the raw material God is using to help us come to our own beliefs, our own conclusions about what we believe. And just what, what better conversation partners to process with than our own loved ones, the people we live with. Now that takes me to Timothy. Uh, Timothy, we, we, read, we read 2 Timothy in our scripture today. Timothy is Paul's protege. Paul left Timothy, poor guy, to be the senior pastor of the church in Ephesus. I say poor guy because uh, Ephesus was the second largest city in the Roman Empire. So first church Ephesus is probably a, a huge church, at least a larger than average church. And Timothy is hilariously young for the job. Okay. Timothy is overwhelmed. He has no idea what he's doing. He's burnt out. He must have written to his, to his mentor, Paul, in another letter that we don't have because Paul says, recalling your tears. I mean, Timothy is so burned out in the ministry, being so young, having this big church, that he is literally sobbing over this letter to his mentor. Like, can you imagine the, like, the watermarks on this letter from his tears? And Paul sees them, recalling your tears. Timothy must be going, I, I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. I, I, should I quit? Should I bail on this calling? Paul's advice is, remember Grandma Lois. Remember your mom, Eunice. Remember them, Timothy. He says, remember the faith that lived first in them and now lives in you. And I love that idea of faith. Faith is a, this living thing that, can, that, that travels from one generation to the next. Timothy, remember the faith that lived first in your grandma, Lois, and then it lived, it caught on in, your, in her daughter, Eunice. And then now it lives in you, Timothy. Well, how can faith actually be transmitted? How can it go from one generation to the next? Well, we talk about it. I mean, eventually, Grandma and Mom, Mom must have talked about their faith with young Timothy. They must have wrestled with his third grade Bible together. They, they must have unpacked what he learned in Sunday school together. They must have shared what they believe and must have shared what they doubt with Timothy. And asked him, hey, Timothy, what do you, what do you think about this? What are, you, what are you wrestling with? They must have talked about God around the dinner table and prayed together. I bet they didn't know what they were doing any more than we did. I mean, to us, they're, they're words in Scripture. To Timothy, they're just they're grandmom and mom. But they talked about faith with Timothy, imperfectly but sincerely, and the words they used had this incredible impact on him, an impact that I'm sure they didn't see coming. Here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to pull out, uh, I didn't warn you about this, pull out your phone or, or a pen. We all have Lois's and Eunice's. We all have grandmas and moms who raised us in the faith, who talked to God, who talked to us about God. I mean, these were Sunday school teachers, pastors, grandparents, parents, friends, and they shared what they believed and asked us what we believed. I know you have those people, or else you would not be here at 9.30 on a Sunday morning, right? You have those people. So I want you to take 30 seconds. Think about the people who talk to you about God, who had faith conversations with you in your life. Take 30 seconds, I'm going to keep the time, and write them down.
when I was preparing for today's message, I wrote down four names. I wrote down my mama and my papa. Uh, those were my dad's parents. Mom and dad, uh, they both worked during the summer, leaving me alone at the house. And so I went to, to mama and papa's house. Mama insisted that we would pray before lunch every day. Wheel of Fortune went off at noon, and she already had hot in the microwave SpaghettiOs and hot dogs, sometimes mixed together. But she insisted that we prayed before lunch every day. And Papa, sometimes I would spend the night at my mom and Papa's house, and Papa was old school. He would say bedtime prayers, and he would say a bedtime prayer with me whenever I spent the night with him. They didn't plan those things out. It just happened. And then I wrote down two more names. I wrote down um, two people who made an impact on me in college, my campus minister, Jan, and my friend in college who was homeless, uh, Ron. Both Jan and Ron made time for me. Uh, they didn't find the time. They made the time. And they wanted, they asked me, hey, what do you believe? Who do you think God is? How do you understand Jesus? What do you think about the Bible? Not what anybody else thinks. What do you believe. Now, what all those conversations have had in common, and what I think Lois and Eunice did for Timothy, is these weren't perfect conversations. They weren't planned out. They did eventually use words, and those words ended up having an impact on me and on Timothy, an impact that no one could have seen coming. Keep that in mind as you're having faith conversations with the people you love. They're never going to be perfect. Eventually, they come around to using words. They, they're going to have an impact on people that, my goodness, you would never know at the time. So I actually want to begin to wrap up this message uh, with, uh, with these five practical things to talk about. If we're going to have faith conversations at home with our families, with people you count as family, what should we talk about? Well, here are five, here are five things uh, that I'm, uh, I have tried and will try with my family. First, rehearse the gospel. We throw around the term gospel or the good news of Jesus without really unpacking what it means to us. How would you define the gospel? What does it mean to you in your home when you talk about the good news of Jesus? What does that mean under your roof with your people? What if we define that? So there's a, uh, a Christian magazine na na named The Christian Century. A few years ago, they asked a bunch of Bible scholars and theologians people who write about God for a living. The, uh, the magazine asked them, how would you summarize the gospel? What does the gospel mean to you? And you can only use seven words or less. Pretty difficult. One said, God through Jesus Christ welcomes you anyhow. I love that. Anyhow. We're a mess. God welcomes us anyhow. Another said, in Christ... God's yes defeats our no. We give people no's. God gives them a yes. Another said, Christ offers new life for all. And I love that all there. Christ doesn't just offer life for a few people or only the select, all. One of the most famous theologians in the 20th century was named Karl Barth. Uh, Karl Barth wrote tomes, like thousands of pages of theology about God and Jesus and the church. Just one of the most prolific theologians in the entire 20th century. He was once asked to summarize the gospel in a sentence. The man was used to writing thousands of words a day, aim for a sentence. He said, here's what the gospel is. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. That's it. So that's my challenge uh, for you in your, in your home with people you count as family this week. I want you to do that. Summarize the gospel in a sentence. What is the gospel to you and your loved ones? Aim for a sentence. You can use a little over seven words if you need to. What, it, what does the good, good news of Jesus mean to you? And then uh, unpack experiences. We think that sometimes we have to bring up God, like you're bringing up a topic of conversation. Well, God doesn't need to be brought up. Right? God is already there waiting to be unpacked in everyday experiences. Just take everyday opportunities as well as these opportunities to unpack what God is already doing. Let me uh, share two examples from my, from my life 
few years ago, uh, my wife's great aunt Catherine passed away in a small town, East Texas. And she went up to the funeral, uh, leaving uh, me to look after our four years old at the time, Caroline. Caroline wanted to know where, where my wife went. She said, I said, well, she went to the funeral for, for Aunt Catherine. And Caroline, as young children will do, asked a lot of questions. What's a funeral? Well, it's when we it's give thanks for someone who has passed away. What does pass away mean? Honey, she died. <laughs> okay, she died. Well, where's Aunt Catherine? She asked. I said, she's in heaven. And then Caroline asked, will we ever see her again? And I said, yes, honey, we, we will. We, we believe in Jesus. We believe Jesus died and, and rose from the dead. That means Jesus is going to raise everybody from the dead. He's going to come back, and it's going to be this great family reunion where we live with Jesus and, and one another forever. Now, she was four years old at the time. And sometimes we think talking to our loved ones are that young about death scares them. Well, actually, she was excited. She was excited because there's going to be a family reunion with Jesus and Aunt Catherine. And now she's kind of looking forward to it in a way. She has this hope in her life. I didn't plan for that conversation. It just kind of, unha- kind of, it kind of happened and we unpacked it. Just a few months ago, we, were, uh, we went out to dinner. We went to a restaurant and I hadn't seen this in a long time. The people next to us dined and dashed. They didn't pay. This, this young couple, they ordered drinks, opened the menu. I guess they did not like what, what they saw in the menu. They took a few sips of their drinks and left without paying. My daughter Caroline saw that. She's now, I think she was five. And she said, Daddy, that wasn't very nice. No, honey, that was not very nice. I said, honey... What if we pay for those drinks? She said, why? I said, well, those drinks, they cost the restaurant money. Now the restaurant's going to lose that money. Jesus tells us that we should be generous. We should give our money away. Don't you think we should, we should pay for them, add them to our bill? And she said, yeah, I think that's a good thing to do. So, and so we did. We didn't plan for that. It just kind of happened. That's, it's, it's a uh, non-threatening, low-pressure spiritually curious way of talking about God. You don't plan for it. You don't bring God up. But in everyday life experiences, you go, hey, what, what, is this, what does this mean for us if we're Christians? How do we live this experience as Christians? What do we believe about these things? Uh, third practical advice is don't waste dinner. <laughs> Jesus in the gospel spends a lot of time talking about God around a dinner table. I think we should too. But what does it look like to talk about God around a dinner table? It means we pray. I, I pray, pray around the dinner table. I, I invite you to pray at least five times a day uh, when you wake up in the morning, at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and before you go to bed, kind of one for each finger. Most of those prayers you'll say by yourself. Like first thing in the morning, I'm in the shower, I'm by myself, right? But around the dinner table, you get to pray with, you get to pray with your family. And you get to talk about God together. And then have, uh, have intentional spiritual conversations together. And those start with intentional spiritual questions. I don't know about you, but I, I typically get into a rhythm of the same questions over and over again with my family. Like, what did you do today? How was your day? What did you do at school? Which become boring. How about these? What gave you joy today? What were you afraid of today? When did you make a mistake today? Who did you help today? And then my favorite, who are we praying for today? Those are going to lead to more interesting conversations than, well, how was your day? They'll lead to conversations about grace and stories in Scripture when, we, when Jesus forgives people. Then admit your doubts what do you doubt about faith? What do you struggle with? What do you have a hard time believing? Do your loved ones know that you struggle with the Bible too? Or do they know that? My, my Caroline, uh, now six years old, asked me just a few days ago, well, Daddy, 
what happens to people when they die but they don't know Jesus? And I'm a pastor, I should have a good answer for that. But I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have a good answer for that. I actually just have more questions. I find this to be a truth that the best faith conversations begin with the question and end with the question. Begin with the question and then you have some, some serious deep conversations and then it ends with, the, it ends with another question. So in, in that conversation I said, well, honey, I, I, I believe in Jesus. I believe that Jesus died and, and rose for me and, and for you. That means we will, we will go to heaven and be with him. And I believe that everybody who's in heaven is there because of Jesus, because of Jesus' great love for everybody. When it comes to people who don't know Jesus, my dear, I've never been to heaven. I don't know. And that's okay. We began with the question and ended with the question. And that's okay. It means you were honest. And here's where I want to wrap up today. Uh, share your story. Do your loved ones and the people you count as family, do they know your faith story? Do they know why you go to church? Do, you know, do they know why you believe in Jesus? Do they, do they know why you gave your life to the Christian story? Do they know what your faith has been through? Do they know when you've wrestled with faith? Do they know? I, I know married couples who, they don't know the faith stories of one another. They never talked about them. You can be friends with somebody for years and never share your faith story. And so do you really know that person? So that's another thing I invite you to do this week. Share your faith story with your own family. Start at home first. I'm going to do that with my, with my Caroline, my daughter. I'm going to tell her that I, I, was, a, I was a church kid. I've, I'm a cradle Methodist. I've been in this game a long time. I uh, grew up going, going to church. I uh, then found uh, this, this group in high school uh, who, were, who read the Bible differently. They were, they were fundamental Christians. They... Uh, my daughter won't know what that means, and so I'll tell her. They, they told me. And I believed that as a high schooler. I did that too. And then I went off to college, and that just wasn't enough for me anymore. It just didn't make sense to me. And so I, I left the faith. If that's what being a Christian meant, I was out. And then I'll tell her, you know, I found, I found Jesus again. I found Jesus in, in campus ministry uh, where I, I found friends and I found community. And I found Jesus again in homelessness ministry, where I saw Jesus in the faces of unhoused people and in acts of compassion and justice. And I came to believe that Jesus, what Jesus wants for me is, is community and friendship and a, and a life of compassion and mercy and justice. And I saw that Jesus perfectly blends these two, these two things, a community and a, and a joyful life for me and a life of impact out in the world. And Jesus combines those perfectly. And so I I gave my life to him all over again. I'm going to tell her that this week. Would you tell your faith story to the people you love the most this week? There's no telling what kind of impact your words are going to have. Every word you say is a seed, and God will take care of the rest. The hope is one day your children and grandchildren, your friends, they're going to be in a worship service one day and a pastor is going to ask them to pull out their bulletin or their phone and, and ask, hey, who had an impact on you? Who had a faith conversation with you? I hope they write your name. The faith that lives in you will one day live in them. Let's pray. Loving and everlasting God, we, we give our faith to you. Help us to talk about it. Help us to be respectful be authentic. And help us to share what you are doing in our lives. God, we find that we don't even know what we believe about you until we talk about you. We talk you out. May we turn to the best conversation partners we have, the people who love us the most. God, may the faith that lives on in us live on in others. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Can we just please rise for the last song? This is on Jordan, Stormy, and Bank Sustain, number 724. On Jordan, 
stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and lie. I am bound for the promise. land or all shine one eternal day the sun forever rain away I am bound for the promise promise land Would you see? Would you please receive this ministry fair? Oh, go and bear witness to the love of God in this world. Go at the love of God, the grace of His Son Jesus Christ, today and forevermore. Amen. I am bound for